The point of me starting this channel was to get away from the endless debate about the future of athletics. I feel the sport has problems, but also a lot going for it, and I have wanted to celebrate that. Has anyone seen what Faith Kip Yegon or Ryan Krauser have been doing recently? Is nobody else wondering what happened to Bryce Itez or Tiki Terry Mayall? I think the first step in helping athletics should be moving away from the only discussion being what we can do to save it. There is a time and a place for that. But also, can you imagine a football game where they pan away from the action back to the studio and spend the next 80 minutes discussing what the game needs? There seems to be one question that fans, athletes and pundits cannot get enough of. And that is, what if Athletics had its own Netflix, Drive to Survive style documentary series? If only Athletics had its own Drive to Survive, what we really need... Now we have one. In August, World Athletics announced a deal with Netflix for a six-episode series shaped around the lives and careers of sprinters, which is set to air in 2024. You happy now, Bush? But is this the greatest thing to happen to athletics since the running career of Usain Bolt? Or will it prove to be a false dawn like the running career of Dexter Lee? This is the story of athletics on Netflix. <laughs> In January, David Verberg, a US 400 meter runner, tweeted, Why doesn't track and field have a show like F1? Same format as the Netflix series. Follow the Diamond League circuit, from practices to agent meetings and run race day to post race, dot dot dot, shenanigans. What does he mean by that? What does he mean? It would be a hit, just a thought. Verberg did get a lot of traction and support for his idea. I say his idea, he was not the first person to mention this. Subco, nonetheless, said in January 2021, the European Broadcasting Union, the guys who brought us Eurovision, that is, and not the entity the UK voted to leave, is talking some quite creative stuff, maybe even a documentary series around athletics, a similar kind of thing to Netflix Drive to Survive. For goodness sake, other documentaries do exist. Points were also made by Deji Obiego in Runblog and another writer, Thomas Bartley, as to why this would be a great idea. To paraphrase their points, a new audience would be reached, money and income streams could reach world athletics and athletes, the drama of athletics would make perfect material, and they got their wish. On August 16th, Netflix announced that it would be answering the prayers of many by undertaking a six-part series. It would be entirely filmed around sprinters. But I'm also here to talk about sprint. They were never going to focus on the hammer, were they? Deadline reported that some filming was undertaken at the 2023 World Championships in Budapest. It did not say which athletes were going to be involved, but it did say their nationalities. In some cases, this is as good as naming the athletes involved. So while we cannot say who, we do know they are from the USA, Jamaica, the United Kingdom, Ivory Coast, Kenya and Italy. The last one really is a puzzle. So they didn't announce the name of the series, but as someone who wrote punny headlines for newspapers for years, I will be damned if I don't give this a go myself. Here are my ideas. On track. Sports days. Life at speed. 100% speed endurance. Running men and women. And they say, stay in your lane, boy. I'm also here today to talk about sprint. But I'm also here to talk about sprint. Praise came in with people saying it will engage with a wider audience and help grow the sport. The opinion of fans matters. But as we all know, what really matters is the opinion of Noah Lyles. He may or may not be the face of this new series, but is definitely the face of World Athletics' own branding at the moment. I am very excited for the Netflix thing because I believe it's going to show the good and bad of our sport. He told The Guardian back in August. I am reading this in my normal voice because I've been told impressions are not my strong point. The matchups, the fast times, the heads to heads, the drama. Because you never know, somebody could false start, somebody could cramp up, somebody could have the best day of their life. But at the same time, it will also show the other moments. Athletes not getting picked up to their press conferences, taking buses that aren't going the right way, or actually, in Lyles' case, a bus crashing into another bus. But are they right to praise the announcement? Let's take this back a step. Drive to Survive first aired in 2019 on Netflix, showing interviews with Formula One drivers and their mechanics in the lead up to races as well as the Grand Prix themselves. The format has been praised for helping dramatise and humanise a sport, which is essentially watching people compete over a number of laps, with the first one to finish being declared the winner. Sound familiar? If it worked for Formula One, why can't it work for Athletics too? 
And we have other elements to our sport as well. One problem is back in 2019, the format was relatively new. But Netflix has since introduced Full Swing, Breakpoint, Quarterback, Tour de France, Colon, Unchained, and any number of behind the scenes stories about football clubs. And this is just on Netflix. There are other, you know, other streaming services. My concern is that casual Omnisports fans may already be committed to series that are already being broadcast and may not have room in their lives for another one. Netflix is also becoming more expensive and has reportedly seen a fall in subscribers. And it's not like this kind of thing hasn't happened before. In 2008, the BBC broadcast Sprint. This one-off documentary looked into the tough lives being lived by Craig Pickering, Wade Bennett Jackson, Simeon Williamson and Harry Aitken Zariti. It was not glamorous and really showed these guys earn of the little they do make, but it did not exactly capture the public imagination. I'm just wondering if the people who tune into this new Netflix series will be the same folk as those who would also choose to tune into the Diamond League and are tuning in because they already like athletics. The problem so far in getting this project off the ground has not been the willingness of the athletes to take part. We have seen this by the fact that many are cutting out the middlemen and taking a DIY approach by starting a YouTube channel like me, although I'm not an athlete. Athletes such as Jake Whiteman and the Nielsen sisters have YouTube channels that are well worth checking out and provide just the kind of insight that Netflix will be looking for. British Athletics, apparently as a way to make money, was said to have had as many as 12 athletes lined up to take part in a project that was codenamed 365 to gold. But this one, the Times reported, did not come off as the BBC were reluctant to invest. Previous to this, the Times columnist Martin Samuel wrote back in May that not every sports story is worth telling, and he pointed to Belgium's doomed 2022 World Cup campaign. The four episodes of One for All charted three matches where Belgium exited the competition at the group stage and scored only one goal. Samuel said of sports documentaries, not every sport is worth broadcasting, the market is saturated, there is not enough content to pad out the number of episodes, it's a gimmick. I do think there are some things to consider here but I do not necessarily agree. I think there are genuine characters in athletics to make it watchable. There are rivalries, frustrations and more than in any other sport, these guys live hand to mouth, scratching a living. However, athletics provides all kinds of competitions to focus on. And I think just limiting this series to sprinting is going to miss out on cross country, road running, throwing and jumping. Adding longer distance as well as field events would also give the series more variety, as although the characters of sprinters does vary, their routines does not so much. We'll see weightlifting, sprint intervals, and not say long runs through Walthamstow wetlands. Athletics is also a sport that does have a ready audience, once per year when there is a major championship on. There is a consensus that the sport does a poor job in marketing the week-to-week -week Grand Prix and Diamond League series. Kyle Merber writes in Sitius magazine, but similar to the hype of an Olympic Games dies down, no one will have the slightest newfound interest will have an idea of where to churn next when they want to watch the 2024 season live. They'll have to wait to find out what happens in series two. Some things get better in stages, and I am confident that this Netflix announcement is a step forward. There is now a documentary coming for athletics. We are trying. It can only really be a good thing, even if it is not what the sport needs. <laughs>